I guess we're going to create a decimal to binary converter. We can call this a decimal to binary calculator. So you can see here, I have an online compiler available at cpp.sh, and that's what I'm going to use to write the code and run this mini program. So how does um, binary or decimal to binary conversion work? Let's have a quick refresher. So here I'm giving you an example with the number 1000, and I want to get this binary representation. This is a binary number that corresponds to this decimal number here. 1000 converted to binary is this, what you see here. So how did I arrive here? It's very simple. You can see these steps are very repetitive. So in our program, we are going to use a while loop, but basically what we are doing at every iteration is we grab that number and then we divide it by two. And what we are interested in is the remainder. So here, if I divide 1000 by two, I get 500, there is no remainder. If I divide, I take that results now and I move to my next iteration. I divide that number again by two and I get 250. Once again, no remainder. So I grab that number once again, and in my next iteration, I divide it by two and I check, is there any remainder? I, I'm only interested in the remainder here because these remainders, the zeros and one that you see here, correspond to the bits in our binary number. Because we are dividing by two, the highest remainder that we're gonna get is one because we are dealing with odd numbers and even numbers. So zero and one corresponds to binary. For those of you who don't know, a binary number can only be zero or one. So again, we keep going. When we reach 125 and we try and divide that by two, the actual answer is 62.5. So what we want to do here is take 62 and then grab that remainder of one. And we're going to store it in some sort of data structures. I'm going to show you two ways of doing that. One using only a string and the other one is going to use a vector. You can use an array, probably a deck and all that. It depends on you, but I'm going to use a string and a vector. So again, we keep going. I grab 62, I divided by two, no remainder. I grab the result here, 31 divided by two, and I go all the way until I reach zero. When I reach zero, then I can't divide it by two again. It doesn't make any sense. So let's go ahead, create our while loop and everything is gonna be very easy. So before I begin here, you see I have IO stream for user inputs and outputs, and I have a string here. I'm gonna use it later on in the program. So first int num, this will be the number to convert. And then uh, I'm going to get the user's inputs. In real life, in a real program, you might want to make that a long, long, just to be safe because of the cap of um, um, integers, you know, so probably even an unsigned long, long like this. All right, so next thing is we're going to have our while loop and I'm going to check so long as the number is greater than zero, because remember here, I said, once we reach zero, we don't do anything. So long as the number is greater than zero, we want to keep going with our operations. And the operations are pretty simple. We want to get uh, the remainder when we divide that number by two and store it in a data structure. So in fact, I want to include vector here. And then I'm going to come up in my program and create a vector. Actually, I don't need for the space here. I can simply have vector. It's going to be a vector of ints because you're going to store only zeros and ones. And I'm going to call that a uh, bits vector. So at every iteration, we want to push a certain bits in our, um, in our vector. So what we can do is simply say bits vector, push back, and then we want to push back this num and we use the modulus operator. The modulus operator is going to give us a remainder of our division by two. And then we want to update the value of num for our next iteration. So I'm going to say this equals num divided by two. But to make it more elegant, I'm going to have it like this. It's the same thing. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if I go back here at every iteration, the number is updated by the results of the previous iteration. So that's what we're doing here. First, we get the uh, remainder is going to be either zero or one. We store that in our vector. And then at the next iteration, uh, we will get the results of our previous number because of this here. One important point that I forgot to make was that if you check here, these bits that we get, the zeros and ones, you have to read them backwards from bottom up. 
So here, this is the um, binary representation of 1000. You can see the five digits of one come first, followed by zero one and triple zero. And if you look here in our operations, the five digits of one come last, then zero one, then triple zero. To be extra sure, by the way, that this is the right value to check against, I'm going to get this inside of this online um, decimal to binary converter available at rapidtables.com. And uh, actually, I'm going to invert that binary to decimal, okay? So that I can now type this binary number, convert it, and I should get 1,000. And I get 1,000, so this is correct. Okay, so now what I want to do is create a loop and read the elements or read the values in my vector in reverse order. So I'm going to say int i is equal to bit vector dot size minus one. So bit vector dot size, uh, this is going to give me the number of elements in my vector. But the reason why I'm adding minus one is because I want to access them using their index. So next up, so far as uh, i is greater than or equal to zero, I want to decrement and then say c out uh, bit vector at i. All right, let's see if I didn't make any um, crazy error. 1000, and I get this, five digits of one, followed by zero one, triple zero, that is correct. Let's check with another number. I'm going to say uh, 128. And 128 gives me three digits of zero followed by three digits of zero. So this is basically like 10 million. Hmm, let's see if that's correct. I'm going to have decimal here. Switch this to binary. And I'm going to type 128, convert. And I get one, two, three, one, two, three. It's also 10 million, basically. So apparently our converter is working fine. Now let's look at the other way. Like if you don't want to use a vector and you only want to use a string, then instead of having a vector here, you could simply have a string. I'm going to call that uh, bits. And then here, instead of adding this uh, to a vector using pushback, I'm just going to say bits.append. But again, this here will give us a um, an integer, a number. So we want to convert that to a string as well. So I can say to string like that. Now the next step is to reverse our string. And we can do that using a function in C++ called reverse. And we can pass it the beginning of our string like this, bit.begin, bit.end like this. So our string will now be uh, reversed and then I can see out the string. But in order for this to work, I need to add one header at the top of my of my program here, includes algorithm. All right, so let's try and run that, see if it works. 1000, and I see the same thing, five digits of one followed by zero one, triple zero, Yep. So uh, that's pretty much it. You can see that uh, this code to me looks a bit cleaner than the, the one we wrote previously with the vector, but it's all a matter of preference. Um, this is a very short program, so you don't really need to worry about optimization and all that. But I hope you learned something that at least. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create the opposites. So we're going to create a binary to decimal converter or a binary to decimal calculator. So I'll catch you next time. Please make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, leave your comments, and cheers.